In today's video, we're going to show you exactly how to remove the forks from your Hardy Davidson with Batwing or Shark Nose Fairing because you may want to do maintenance or upgrade your suspension. Welcome back, Bikeholics. Ryan Erlacher here, LawBuddingBiker.com. I always thank you. That's right, you for checking back in. Now, Hardy says you should change your fork oil every 50,000 miles, and I say you should rebuild them at the same time. And of course, we have videos for both those projects, and I'll link to them in the description below. Of course, if you notice a leak on either fork, you'd want to perform maintenance right away. And just real quick, before we get started, I want to mention the footage in this video is actually taken from our very detailed Olings and Progressive Front Suspension install videos. We love both of those suspensions. I'll link to those videos in the description below. And with that said, what do you say we get wrenching, huh? But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit another biker joins the revolution we'd love to have you be part of it all right so the first thing for this project we've got the bike on a titan lift we've got a 1000 pound titan mini jack underneath it because we're going to remove the front wheel fender fork stuff like that uh, there is no better way to work on your motorcycle than having this titan lift and mini jack we do sell it right in the law abiding biker store we'd love to get one shipping your way I will link to it in the description below. So with his 15 16 socket there, he's got on a breaker bar, he's gonna crack that front axle nut. And with it cracked, he can go ahead and back that nut off and there is a washer behind that. You'll wanna save it, of course. And now with the dead blow hammer, he's just gonna go in while the bike uh, tire is still on the lift and at least pop that through flush. Now we can jack the bike up. All right, and he's just going around to his mini jack there. And uh, he's gonna start jacking that up so we can get this front wheel off the lift for wheel removal. Okay, so before we pop the axle through the rest of the way, we're gonna take off the brake caliper on the left side here. That's a 10 millimeter 12 point socket uh, for those brake caliper bolts that go into the forks there. And he's moving up to the top one. Now for regular front wheel removal, you really only need to remove one. But in this case, we're gonna be removing both forks. And so we're just gonna remove both brake calipers, one on each side for this touring model. And you're just finishing that top one. Of course, that's gonna release it. And you've got a wire organizer there too that uh, kind of guides your wires. And he'll just kind of let this uh, dangle for now. And then uh, we'll be able to let it go the rest of the way when we get that speed sensor, ABS sensor out of there. And he's just working on the brake caliper, of course, on the right side here, same two bolts that he's going to remove. And he got that one free there. He's just working it off the rotor. And you can kind of let that one dangle back there off the engine guards or set it on the brake pedal. Take a little pressure off that line. All right, so on the left side of the bike here, one thing you'll want to note before you start uh, popping the axle through the rest of the way, you'll notice the black speed sensor that's got a wire on the back side there it is your abs speed sensor and then we'll move over to the other side here and on this side you'll want to note between the forks and the wheel is a spacer and you'll see the machined grooved lines go to the outside you'll want to note that because we'll put it back on the same way okay so now with the wheel off the lift uh, and the brake calipers removed he's just got a phillips screwdriver and a dead blow hammer he's going to push that uh axle through you can see it kind of dropped there and now we can remove that speed sensor out of there of course that dangles the whole caliper and he's just getting that caliper off the rotor there and he'll find a place to set that you can also zip tie it if you want to your crash bars or just set it like he is all right now you can uh pull that axle out the rest of the way he's going to be supporting the wheel there of course the spacer on that other side drop down no big deal there and he can get this tire out from there now. All right, with a quarter inch hex head there on a socket and extension, we're gonna remove this fender from the forks and there's two bolts on both sides. And on the inside, you don't have to worry about it because those nuts are welded on. So you just back the bolts out there and one on the back side of the fork, one on the front side there. And he's just working on that last one there, of course, supporting his fender. So it doesn't just drop onto the lift. And now I can get that fender out of the way. All right, so we're gonna remove the fuel tank. It, you don't have to, but uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier to work up there at the fork. So remove the seat here is what we're gonna do. It's really easy to remove the fuel tank. We're gonna show you how here. That's a thumb bolt, one of our extended thumb bolts for the rear seat. Makes it super easy to get off. It is a product from Rick Rack. We sell it right in the Law Abiding Biker store. We've got uh, regular and then extended for your touring to get behind that passenger seat and all that makes it super easy. I'll link to everything in the description below. With that, he's gonna go ahead, pop the rear of the seat up, slide out that front tongue, and then he's got a wire to contend with because this is 
my Harley heated hammock. He's gonna unplug that and get the seat out of the way. All right, first thing, he's gonna pull that vent line. There's one vent line on the right side. It'll probably be zip tied down stock on your bike. So go down there, look for the zip tie. There's another vent line over on this side here and he can actually disconnect it right there. And got that popped off. Next, he's looking for his gray plug. There's a gray plug underneath the seat there. And he's gonna go ahead and push that and then it pulls right out like that. And on the rear of the tank here are two bolts. They're Torx T40. And he's gonna go ahead and back these out. Got that one out there and he'll move around to the left side of the tank here and back that one out. Again, Torx T40. Okay, so before we move the front tank bolts, we wanna keep it a little bit uh, steady because you gotta, gotta yank on this fuel line to get it out. Little rag underneath, you are gonna spill just a little bit of fuel, but this is a quick disconnect. He's gonna go ahead and push up on the black bottom portion, pull up on the uh, silver sleeve there, and then pull down on the black fuel line. And he popped it there. You, like I say, you'd lose just a little bit of fuel, but uh, that's disconnected. Okay, and then at the front of your tank, both sides, bolts, there's little rubber covers over it. They just pop off, exposing the bolt there. Torx T40, same as the rear of your tank. Again, one on the left front here and one on the right front, and he'll back these all the way out. All right, finishing up, getting this left side out, he'll move around to the right side. And he's just finishing getting that right front tank bolt out. Now that completely frees the tank up, all the lines are undone, he can go ahead and just kind of lift up on the rear and pull back there, and then you can lift a tank out of the way. That'll make it much easier to work and get at those fork cap bolts up here and clamps. All right, and then uh, on both sides of your lower inner dash cover here is a Torx T27 bolt, left and right side. All right, and you're just moving around to the other side and uh, he'll get that bolt out of the way. All right, so what you wanna do now is stock here. This is stock and he's gonna go ahead and remove that big plug there. It's just a push tab and then you pull it out. You're gonna have one of those on both sides and then whatever other accessories that you uh, have plugged in and we can rock that out of the way there. All right, and so to make it easy to get this inner dash panel off, we're gonna actually remove the ignition here. And he's gonna go ahead and turn it to the fork lock position. All right, so he's gonna go ahead and put his key in and he's gonna turn that all the way counterclockwise. At the same time, he's got a screwdriver and he's using a flat head there. He's pushing up on a button there underneath. At the same time, he's turning that ignition. He's pushing down now, the button is up there. And now we can go ahead and lift this whole ignition off. Just be sure to take it straight off and don't turn it. You don't wanna misalign your ignition. Now he's gonna take the spring off there. All right, and so he's gonna take that uh, top nut off. Channel locks is all you need. And you can see it unthreads there and these only go back on one way. And then he'll take the lower collar off there. All right, and on each side of that inner dash panel, Torx T25, there's a bolt on left and right side. And that's what he's removing here on the left side. And just moving around and getting this right side one out. All right, and with those two uh, screws removed, you can go ahead and pull this inner dash panel out. He will have some plugs to contend with here. All right, so just got some deadheaded plugs there. They're just in caps, and you just push the tab and pull those out. Or you may have accessories, whatever you have, you'll need to unplug. All right, and then he's just got his main gauge plug there, and it's got tabs on each side. He's just prying up with a screwdriver, popping those. There we go. All right, so now this deadheaded plug on the other side, uh, it's kind of hard to get to but uh, there's a tab up underneath there, um, just like the other side, but it's at the top this time. It's easier to get in there with a screwdriver and pop that one. So now there's two sets of clamps. You've got your mid clamps for the forks. There's two bolts down there. And then at the top, there's one bolt. Again, that clamps the forks uh, or the fork left side into position there. That's a quarter inch hex head. And he's gonna go ahead and break that top one and start backing it out. Now, no big deal here because you've still got your mid clamps uh, supporting the fork and he's gonna go ahead and at least break those and get them started there. All right, just real quick and we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hour expenses and effort go into keeping this channel going strong. Of course, there's a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll free zone, nothing but bikers helping bikers. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat podcasts, early premium videos, and of course, access to those ride, meetup, and events. 
we appreciate you considering becoming a member. All right, let's get back into your video. Now for the next part, it helps to have a partner because as he's loosening those, the fork's gonna want to drop out and we don't want it dropping on the lift. So having a partner up front while you're loosening those and guiding the fork out is very helpful. And so same thing on the right fork is just have that partner and uh, loosen those uh, inner clamps up and guide that fork out of the way. All right, so we're gonna go back in with the forks now. We're gonna start with the left side. Now there's a bevel at the top of your fork tube. You see that bevel? When you're putting these back in, you want your top clamp, the uh, top of the clamp, um, to basically be somewhere midway uh, on that bevel. So they'll just sit slightly above the top lip of the uh, clamp. All right, so the easiest way to do this is definitely to have a second set of hands and one person can slide the uh, fork and tube up into the mid clamps and upper clamp while the other person on the inside is starting to tighten those bolts down and making sure again that we have the top of that fork lined up with the clamp appropriately. All right, and with a quarter inch uh, hex head, there's two bolts there um, that he's tightening down. Those are your uh, mid clamp bolts. And he's just getting these a little bit snug and then we're gonna torque them down to specs. And he's moving up top there to that one, same size and just one bolt. And he's gonna snug that one down too before we torque it. That's your top clamp there. All right, so just going in with his torque wrench and it's the same for the top clamp and the two bolts at the mid clamp and it's 14 to 18 foot pounds is what he's putting on those. Got that one and he'll go torque the two mid clamp bolts. And we're going back in with the uh, right fork and we're gonna do everything exactly the same and torque things down, get everything lined up. And of course now we're gonna go back on and get the fender into place. And it definitely helps to have a partner for this too. Uh, one guy can hold it in place because there are the four bolts, both sides, front and back of the forks there. And we'll get these bolts all finger started. And with this quarter inch hex head wrench there, he's gonna go ahead and go around this fender, both sides and just get these snug down. We're not gonna torque these. All right, and of course, back up with our front wheel. Do make sure that you're putting this on correctly. There's arrows on it in the direction that it turns. You don't wanna put it on backwards. All right, and just to speed this up, we're gonna to work together putting this front wheel back on. And uh, don't forget that you've got the axle. We put a little anti-seize grease on it so it comes off easier next time. And then that goes through. And then of course, on the right side, there's a spacer and uh, it's got machine grooves in it that goes to the outside of the bike. It goes in between the fork and the wheel. And then as we pop the axle through, um, of course, between the left fork and the wheel goes the ABS speed sensor. And then the, we can slide the axle all the way through. All right, don't forget your stock washer goes on first and then your uh, front axle nut. All right, and then don't forget your stock bolt there. That is your pinch bolt that uh, it's a safety mechanism that pinches your axle from the other side, just in case you did lose your axle nut or it loosened up. And with a six millimeter hex head, he's gonna go ahead and torque this pinch bolt down to 18 to 22 foot pounds. There we go. On the torque wrench there, he's gonna torque this down 70 to 75 foot pounds is what the front axle nut calls for. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go back on with the both uh, brake calipers there. Just make sure you spread the brake pad plates apart so they fit over your rotor. You can use a screwdriver. Uh, just take care not to mar them up. Okay, this left side uh, brake caliper, now that the uh, cheek plates are spread apart, you can fit it up over the rotor there. And of course, line the two bolt holes up there. All right, with this caliper back in place over the rotor, he can start lining things up. Don't forget there's an additional plate on the left side. That's a stock bolt and washer. And that little uh, plate there is to guide your ABS sensor wire and hold it. So he's getting that all squared away. And then he can go in with his stock bottom bolt and washer. And then he'll follow it up here with his 10 millimeter 12 point socket on those brake caliper bolts. And he's just getting those snug down. And he'll do the same install on the other side minus the ABS wire and he'll do the same install on the other side minus the ABS wire. All right, and he's uh, just putting that lower dash panel back in place there. Just make sure that whatever wires you unplugged can vary, whether it's a street glider or an ultra, but uh, 
plug everything back in the way it came out and he'll get that position into place there. And don't forget you have two bolts left and right side that he's getting started there. And those are Torx T27. And just moving around to the left side there, getting the hole lined up and he'll get that one in there and snug down. All right, we're gonna put the ignition back together. First, you take your collar and it's got two nipples on it there. They slide down into the channels there. And then I go on with his uh, threaded collar there. It's actually a nut, so to speak. And it threads right over the top there. And then I'll take his channel locks and just barely a snug here. You don't have to do much. All right, so he's gonna go back on with his ignition, put the spring over the shaft there. Now, remember we took this out in the fork lock position. You wanna go in very gently and uh, back in the fork lock position, feeling for the channels there, try not to turn it. Um, and he's feeling for it there and back into place. And now he can go ahead, he's got his key and he's gonna push down on that and turn clockwise and it locks that. You'll hear it lock and snap into place. All right, and he's just uh, getting his tank position back there. He'll kind of slide it on and try to line up those front two holes. All right, and he's just going in with his bolt there, left front, and there's one on the right front too. And we're not gonna tighten anything down yet. Uh, we gotta line up the back holes, but he'll go around to the right side and get that one started. And just two bolts on the rear here of the tank, left side, and then he'll move over to the right side there. And with his uh, wrench now, Torx T40, he can go ahead and get these rear ones snugged all the way down. And with the rear ones tightened, he can go ahead and go up front, left and right side, and get those snugged down too. And again, Torx T40. And don't forget your rubber cap that goes over the top of the front bolts there. And he's gonna go ahead and hook up his fuel line. He's pulling up on the chrome collar there, pushing up on the black portion, and you heard it snap into place. All right, just gonna get his uh, right side vent line, just fish it down through the right side of the bike there. Again, when this is stock, it is zip tied and uh, you can certainly put a zip tie on it if you want. And he'll move over to the other side here and there's that vent line that he'll pop back together there. And he's gonna go ahead and grab his gray plug there. Only goes one way, make sure it clicks together. And of course he can go back on with the seat here. This is my Harley heated hammock, so plugs into power underneath there. He'll slide that uh, rocket up, slide that front tongue in, get it positioned in the back there, and then he'll secure it down with our Rick Rack seat bolt in the Law Abiding Biker store. Link in the description below. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get by Colics. Peace.